You also might use an ice bag. An ice bag is a reusable waterproof container that can be filled with ice, uh, large pieces of ice or ice chips and it will help uh, provide temporary local cold. Sometimes you might see a nice bag that is used, uh, a vinyl glove that you might use for standard precautions. Sometimes you will have ice chips put into that um, uh, vinyl glove and applied to the forehead or face if there is going to be um, surgery on the face and you might have to use a vinyl glove for the cold application. Dry cold applications are never placed directly on an affected area. You must always cover them with a flannel, a uh, piece of material, a towel, or other protective material. There's also moist cold applications. One might be a wet compress. A wet compress is moistened with a solution and placed on the affected area. The solution may, in addition to water, be alcohol. Alcohol um, evaporates very rapidly from the skin and along with that evaporation of the alcohol is the evaporation of heat and so it's particularly used when there is a high temperature on an individual and we want to get that temperature down quickly. A wet compress can be kept cold by placing a covered ice bag against the affected area. There are safe ranges for use of cold. If it's going to be what's termed a tepid cold application, tepid means lukewarm, that would be around 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you recall, the normal uh, body temperature is 98.6. So this is just a little bit cooler than normal body temperature. Then a cool application would be about 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then a cold application would be 50 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You won't have cold applied um, lower than that because it can do damage to the skin. Now I'd like you to watch a demonstration of applying a disposable cold pack. Wash your hands and assemble your equipment. Provide for privacy. Identify the patient and explain the procedure. Expose only the area to be treated. And notice the condition of the skin. Strike or squeeze the cold pack and shake it vigorously to activate the chemicals. Be certain to follow the manufacturer's instructions specifically. Place the ice pack in a cloth covering. Place the covered cold pack on the proper area and cover with a towel. Note the time of application. Secure the cover with tape or gauze if necessary to hold it in place securely. Leave the patient in a comfortable position with the signal cord within easy reach. Return to the bedside every 10 minutes. Check the area being treated for discoloration or numbness. If these signs and symptoms occur, discontinue the treatment and report them to the nurse. If no adverse symptoms occur, remove the pack in 30 minutes or after the amount of time given in your instructions. Note the condition of the skin. Remove the pack from the cover and discard it according to your facility policy. Make the patient comfortable and wash your hands. As with cold applications, warm applications are only done with a physician order. There are a number of uses for heat. Some might be to relieve muscle spasms if a person has a strain back, there might be using heat to help relax those muscles. Also, heat can reduce pain, provide some soothing warmth, 
Oh, sometimes if a person has had rectal surgery, hemorrhoid surgery, something like that, it helps to um, use warm water to relieve some of the pain. Also, warmth can dilate or increase the size of blood vessels. That's called vasodilation. This vasodilation helps bring the blood vessels closer to the surface and that provides nutrients that are brought along in the blood and oxygen and will, can remove waste products. Another reason why heat might be used is to combat local infections by helping remove harmful wastes. And it improves the mobility of an individual before exercise periods. Sometimes if a person is going to physical therapy, they have rheumatoid arthritis, very stiff joints, the warmth can help loosen those, relax those joints a little bit so that the physical therapy is uh, more productive. Moisture increases the effect of warmth because water conducts heat and heat penetrates deeper with moisture and so to prevent injury the temperature of moist heat must be lower than it is with dry heat. Never allow an individual to lie on a constant heat unit because heat can be trapped and build up to a dangerous level. We had an experience several years ago in our area where it was reported a young mother uh, had a fussy child. The child seemed to be cold and out of frustration and all. She wrapped this little infant in an um, electric blanket to, uh, in an effort to soothe her and keep her warm. And she quieted down, but when the mother came later, uh, the child had died. When the um, emergency room saw her, her temperature was 110 degrees Fahrenheit and it was a very sad reminder of the hazards that can take place when wrapping somebody in um, a heat blanket or even having them lie on it, particularly folks that may not be able to report problems. Always use a bath thermometer to check the water temperature to make sure that it's within a safe range and always remove a body part before applying water. So if, for example, you're going to be soaking a foot, take that foot out before putting fresh warm water in. Warmth is not applied to the head because it could cause blood vessels to dilate and result in a, quite a severe headache. Rubber or plastic should be